Perhaps you don't need to be a scientist to understand science. Welcome to Cranium vs Skull. This episode has happened, will happen and is happening and includes a new theory of God. Hi! Crawling through your cranium is Konstantin Petrov, theoretical physicist. Or is he? Sobbing seductively in your skull. Emma Phillips, translator. Hello. Hi. I'm Emma. I'm Constantine. Glad to meet you. Oh, glad to meet you. Uh, what's your specific area of interest in science, I guess? Uh, well, it's uh, quantum field theory, which is the science of really the smallest, 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 smallest things there are. Okay. Uh, would you refer to them as particles? Yes, of course. Everything they is uh, pretty much. Uh, yes, they use the... Um, a name which means um, nonsense in German. What's that? Uh, quark. Oh, a quark! Okay, yeah. I have heard of quarks, but yeah. in the context of my family talking about quarks. Oh, really? Ooh, skull. For Team Scully. Are they red and green? Well, they're red, green and blue. What tells like a red quark from a green, apart from a green quark, if it's not the color. Is well, the... as you cannot see quarks, nothing okay. really tells them apart. Okay. Uh, you really need to see something. We only know of their existence by indirect uh, observations of something that is happening. So in nature, nothing is colored in the same sense that they are colored. So they only come in three, with three colors which give white. Okay. You know, if you, you can take uh, three colors and make white out of them. Oh, so if you superimpose them. If you colors, superimpose you, you them, yeah. The white. Or okay. you can take a color and an anti color and it will become white. What is an anti color? It's anti red. It's nothing. <laughs> there is no uh, um, analogy in the color world, so that's where it stops. But. Um, Okay, and why do they have to come in sets of three? So in theoretical physics, you do some assumptions of mathematical nature. You say, oh, those things are like that. And they, they interact like that. Okay. And then you do calculations and you compare it to the real world. Okay. And it's either bingo or not bingo. So that was not the bingo by a factor of three. Okay, so it needs all three to make a particle that's bigger than... Yeah. Okay. And that particle is actually very weird uh, in the sense uh, that uh, we think of us being made of matter. Yeah. Uh, that's not really true. There are two different things in physics. There is matter and there is energy. Okay. So matter is something and the energy is how it interacts between itself. So 97% of your weight is actually energy. Okay. Go, 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 go. And what brought you to Paris? Uh, I didn't actually want to live in Paris initially. I, I, I had this idea when I was 14 that I wanted to live in France. And uh, I visited Paris and I thought, what a nice place to visit. But I will go anywhere else but here to live because it's so different from the rest of France that then... Thank God. What is well, it about I... Paris that you like so much? Oh, uh, well, that's very clear. Um, there is a lot of stuff to look at. Ooh. The latest sense. <laughs> I walked past the canal the other day and someone was, had just pulled up their catch of the day and he was so excited reeling in this fishing rod that came up it was just a Johnny. So did you stay in the States a long time? Uh, three and a half years. Mm. Then um, I actually turned down the offer from my team to work for them. I also had an offer uh, from Europe to come back on Marie Curie scholarship. So where were you based with that scholarship? In Copenhagen, in mm -hmm. Denmark. So mm -hmm. I was uh, working in the ancient mansion of Niels Bohr. Okay. And I was spending uh, time uh, with a guy who was, um, how should I put it, uh, let's say very senior. So he could Who is this guy again? Sorry? Well, his name is Holger Nielsen. Okay. He's not extremely popular. I don't know. I think he doesn't speak English uh, often, so he didn't become a superstar. And he was also based in Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah. He okay. is, uh, probably was the most known scientist uh, mm -hmm. there. Also, it was nice that with Marie Curie, I was getting paid more than him. What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> because that's how Marie Curie works. I'm no theoretical physicist, but... Uh... <laughs> you, th you think you think the mind has a skull too? Where's the ownership between 
craniums being blown and skulls being mined. I wouldn't mind my cranium being skulled. I don't know if that was an answer or a poem. But he could um, just uh, fall asleep while talking to you and then um, five minutes just later wake up and continue from where he left. <laughs> At that time, physics was searching for something called Higgs boson. Uh, which was the god particle, as it was described everywhere okay. on TV, and we couldn't find it. So his idea was that somehow there is an action from the future which prevents us describing it. So that, okay, so we, in the present we can't find the god particle because there's a future. Where, there's, which, so all the futures future where it's found are right. destroyed in a sense. Well, okay. there is this. Um, ideas that every moment, every possible future is produced. Okay. So okay. we are branching uh, in uh, billions of billions of trillions of billions of trillions of billions of futures every, every moment. So there's like infinite possibilities with every mm, yes. thing that happens. So it's kind of the opposite of fate. It's not things happen for a reason, it's the... Yeah, it's everything which is, can happen, happened. Excuse me while I pick up fragments of my skull from the floor, because this cranium's just blown it wide open. Everything that can happen, happens. Yes. Wait, are you busy? Because I could get a broom and sweep those fragments of cranium up. Be my guest. I mean, literally everything that could have happened, it happened somewhere else. Uh, yes. Other than what we're we're experiencing, one of the yes. trillion trillion possibilities. Exactly. But there, elsewhere, everything else happened. Elsewhere, the, it couldn't be that Neanderthals are completely over uh, ruling this world, and uh, where is that elsewhere? Well, that el uh, hypothesis <laughs> were never really quantified. But okay. uh, the thing is that um, well, it's the Schrodinger cat issue. Imagine that. Um, this uh, glass is a bit like that. Okay. <laughs> we can see at this moment uh, that it's um, close to falling. Yeah. So if I leave it, it will either fall here yeah. or not. It's both uh, broken and uh, intact at the same time. And that is, of course, um, only pertinent to the really micro world. So okay. it only can be one atom. Mm -hmm. However, at that time already the atomic clock was invented, which is basically uh, two golden leaves, mm -hmm. and when you and there is uh, some uranium between them. So when uranium um, decays, it throws out uh, an electron. They okay. become positively charged okay. and they move away. These two golden the leaves. The two golden leaves. Okay. And at some point they'll touch the end of the bulb, and uh, there will be a current. Uh, then you can uh, attach this device, instead of making it a clock, to a vial of poisonous gas. Okay. And if there is current, it opens the vial. Right. And you put it in a big box, yeah. and you put a cat in there. Okay. Now, from the point of view of quantum mechanics, the atom of uranium lives in a weird state called superposition. It okay. means that it's decayed and de not decayed in the same time. Okay. And uh, so that means that the leaves are like this and like this at the same time. Okay, because we're not Because sure we don't know what's uranium. happening. Okay, uh, okay. The box is closed. So okay. the cat is dead and alive at the, at same, the time. same time. Okay. That's a thought experiment. Nobody ever did anything <laughs> bad to a cat. In principle, we can calculate pretty much everything. Uh, we can calculate electron parameters for much better than we can calculate uh, the opinion polls or even the election results. But we don't know what really happens. Out like a flame. What is going on? If I had a mute button, I would unmute it so I could hear what he didn't say. Uh, so, I mean, what, out of all of this studying really, really small things, I mean, what are the actual real world implications? Mm, yes, Particles. like your phone. Right, okay, yeah. So all of the modern electronics runs on quantum mechanics. We are basically um, subtracting one infinity from another and okay. we are getting your iPhone out of that. Okay. 
So uh -huh. the things which are actually used in the modern telephones mm. require understanding of the field theory, and there are a lot of infinities which you have to deal with. Okay, so, I defined infinity in this context because you're talking about one infinity minus another infinity, but I don't. What what is the measure of infinity? Well. Um, how should we put it? Uh, imagine uh, there is a um, whole um, crowd of uh, men and a whole crowd of women, yeah. and at some point they get to dance. Okay, yeah. So there is million of them, million of them, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you wouldn't know if there is million and two. Okay, yeah. But it's once they big. start to dance... Yeah. You see, oh, there are two people who are not dancing. Yeah, okay. And actually, those are two people which make the sense out of our world. Everybody who mm. uh, can be um, removed from the game is irrelevant. Don't try to look for uh, social uh, repercussions of that they are known. But uh, it just uh, shows us that our mathematics is probably not very good. Okay. I think I need a little break. I think I need a break, she responded to the cranium that just blew her <laughs> skull. Cranium skull. Do you know who invented Big Bang? No. It was a Catholic priest. Please tell yeah, me. Yeah, it I'm was Catholic a Catholic priest, priest uh, working in Vatican. His name was Lemaitre. Okay. And he actually um, looked at what Hubble discovered and went to the United States, uh, met with Einstein and Hubble, mm -hmm. and persuaded them that his idea is viable. How did he get the idea of the Big Bang then? What was his... Creation is basically the idea. But, I mean, if you believe in the Big Bang, that, I mean, that's accepted knowledge. No, I don't, now. but... Um, you don't believe in the Big Bang? Now I can say that. What do, what, what, why, why do you not believe in the Big Bang? Uh, because it's a religion. There is no okay. theory which explains the mechanism of how it happens. Okay. So, um, so there, there, there have not been um, subsequent Big Bangs that have happened? Uh, no, the particles which are responsible for Big Bang do not exist in modern world. What it is it you are trying to say to me? God damn, Mrs. Bill, Bill, Mom, I'm trying to catch up! Oil, pure oil! Earlier, uh, you said something about uh, in, in terms of our existence, from moment to moment, there are almost infinite possibilities which are played out somewhere. A lot of people draw comfort, for example, uh, from the idea that somehow we are on God's path. Uh, of course, uh, as you know that things which happen in your brain are quantum, you can assume uh, that uh, there would be a lot of uh, things which are random. Okay. And um, that's very hard to accept, that mm. even yourself are not a um, soul, perfect soul, which is reasonable um, and uh, sort of made in God's image, mm. but a bunch of random electrons, uh, and uh, if somebody puts you in a magnetic field, you become actually a very different person. We can put um, a heavy magnet here, right. and you'll have a religious experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, in a sense, are sort of uh, electric machines, just uh, mm -hmm. much more advanced uh, because um, everything which wasn't advanced didn't survive to the point of asking this question. <laughs> so there's really something in the fact that we can even ask the question. Mm, certainly. You may, uh, in the best case, discard completely the um, Judeo-Christian uh, philosophy but um, there is how, no... How so you can discard it? Well, you figured out um, dinosaurs existed. So by that you rule out uh, the idea that Earth was made 6,000 uh, years ago. Right. When I get, uh, let's say, it's really late in the evening, I can develop a cosmogony. What's how that? What basically happened? In the beginning. We found a glitch in not only the cosmos, but the sky. And some of us indigo emerald dinosaurs escaped through this. We took all the pearls and escaped into another dimension, which we are just divulging to the world right now. 
and we were brought here by our trusty robot AIs. <laughs> Dino Plan! They've mistranslated us through movies and um, literature for hundreds of years. We have been misrepresented by the media. We are a fabulous race of blingy dinosaurs. And robots. So for example, right. uh, let's say you are some sort of civilization okay. which has unlimited power except that you can't break laws of physics. How would you travel? You want to go somewhere mm -hmm. and space is just huge. Mm -hmm. You build a spaceship and it just goes um, with a speed which is... Um, and there is no energy to make it go for billions of years because um, nuclear energy is nothing. Um, so you're saying if we were the most technically advanced version of ourselves yeah. that we could be and we had to obey the laws of physics, we could use and nuclear we energy to go No, away. we can already use nuclear energy. It's not really helpful. Okay. Our nuclear-powered spacecraft, the one even exited the solar system, the Voyager, the famous... Okay. Took us a long time. Yeah. We're certainly not going to get into Andromeda this way. Okay. So um, nuclear energy is not even enough for us humans. But um, thermonuclear we can't make so far. There is a project in France, project in the United States. It doesn't look like we are getting anywhere. With thermonuclear? Yeah. Okay. So um, what if that would be impossible by laws of physics that you can't make a small thermonuclear reactor? Okay. So let's say you make a big one. Okay. But then uh, you can't be around it because oh, it's no, a big it's, thing. <laughs> so you need to be quite away from that. Yeah. And that, now you have a mass, both of you. You are huge. Newton uh, tells you that uh, you'll interact. So maybe you'll be going around wow. one the other. Uh, okay. So here is how you build the sun and put a um, habitable orbit. thing. Right. Now after that you will very quickly realize that that won't work because okay. again of N N Newton and Kepler laws. You need to put other planets to stabilize the smaller one between mm -hmm. uh, you and uh, the star and the bigger one outside. Okay. That's the only one you can stabilize. That's calculation we did many times. We really need Jupiter and stuff. Okay. Saturn just got sat on. Somebody sat in the urn. And then uh, basically you're up for your journey. I don't know if you know with which speed we're actually going, no, but it's uh, about millions, millions of kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, so those are the speeds which are way bigger than any of our spacecraft. Uh, the way solar, the speed at which, which solar system moves together mm. and you don't feel it at all. Mm. And it can go for ages. Mm. So you are going somewhere, finally, very nice, you found a way to travel. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you can see that you have this technological god who invented. But then you actually want to know that it's us who are going. We are the technologically advanced civilization. We okay. want to get there. We don't want some monkeys to be there. <laughs> and we don't even know what monkeys are. So what you can do is, uh, if you are a carbon-based form, mm. Uh, that uh, you let this thing evolve like it does and you just need to make small changes to the DNA eventually mm. so that they become like you. I see. So the question is only how to do that. And that we already can do now with CRISPR and Cas9. We can edit the DNA. CRISPR and Cas9. You've been living under a rock recently. Uh, apparently. Oh, the gremlin's out! So we found a way to edit DNA in living organism. So that would be God, which I can understand and I can relate to. Mm, mm, mm. Yet for most people, uh, in a sense, that's the God. He did create you for a purpose in mm. his image. I see what you mean. So um, there is no way that, uh, in a sense, uh, science would be busy talking about if there is God or not. Tell us what your God is and mm. uh, we'll try to estimate if it makes sense or not. I mean, God is known for what? IVF, innocent uh, concept, immaculate conception. God is known for raising from the dead mm. and many things that we really can do now. Is he a theoreticist or is he a quantum Smeagolist? <laughs> yeah, there is no real sense in that. I mean, uh, all of that is really far-fetched. The fact that it's possible doesn't mean that it's the way it's happened. Humanity. That's your theory, yeah? Yeah. Never nice. tell that to your wife.
Oh, she loves it. <laughs> and she also has very <laughs> short <laughs> memory. She forgets stuff within about eight months. So um, <laughs> eight months cycle. that's how we are married for 20 years. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, why are you interested? What do you do? What do I do? I am a translator. I also work in news and I also write as well. Is it the order is uh, correct or yeah, you're right and you <laughs> still get uh, money by translating some weird stuff? Yeah, in terms of like, where does, where, how do I pay my rent? I pay my rent through translation and use and then in my spare time I write. <laughs> so your job part is really endangered by artificial intelligence, but your true part is not. Um, well, in terms of if if there could be creative artificial intelligence, then we're all uh, done for. Not likely. Um, and even in the translation industry, we still talk about uh, the black box of tra even though there have been huge leaps forward in translation technology. Ta you're taking a look above in terms of well, is the meaning still there? And then that's up to you. It's sort of. Well, most it's often they're not, it's not. So. <laughs> yeah, well, at the moment, that's what's keeping our job safe. Do you enjoy uh, doing that, uh, the translation itself? Because I did it in my youth yeah. and I hated it totally. Yeah, because, what made uh, you hate it? Mm, Sorry, the ambiguity. Well, I think that's, that's where, at the moment, this ambiguity is where we justify human intervention, is that you need to make a subjective call what kind of stuff were you translating? Uh, well, I was translating. The first thing uh, I was given uh, was Stephen King's It. Take over America. Just go babble along. Oh, my bad. It didn't work last time. Oh, shit. And by that time, the words um, in Soviet Union, well, it was already, it was broken, but there was uh, things that, for example, word queer, it yeah. only meant strange. So when it was kill all queers on mm. the um, wall somewhere written in this uh, children's park, yeah. I translate it as uh, kill all the weirdos. Kill all the weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is you need to have that extra cultural knowledge, basically. That and works. desire to translate it correctly. In another book, uh, which I wasn't translating but was reading, there was a part where uh, somebody sings the song I will just need my reefers, I want to get, feel high again. Mm -hmm. And it was translated, um, uh, put uh, up uh, the sails higher and uh, we'll move on into the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> so I live uh, close to where um, Hemingway lived, uh, okay. where Len. So Ulysses was actually written about 100 meters from where I live, not uh, in that suburb of Dublin. No. <laughs> so, no. Um, and that's actually also made me quit physics. I don't do it anymore oh, since about five years. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I switched to computer science okay. and now to bioscience. Oh, so you've actually come back to bio... Yes. <laughs> After all those years? Yes. And um, how? what do you make of it So, in comparison to your physics career? Um, well, it develops much faster. It's way mm. more interesting. Mm, mm, mm. Physics, I had a feeling of being some sort of a, uh, ancient patrician that we are studying something which had was only relevant 14 billion years ago and we look at everybody else like uh, midgets because we are eternal in a sense. Uh, there is nothing more fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, I also enjoyed it being completely useless because at least you don't do any harm. Someone take the batteries out of his neck. So right, okay. uh, the genius of Einstein yeah. was actually extremely simple. He didn't invent anything in terms of... Um, oh, this way, there we wrapped it up. Aren't all theoretical physicists poets? Aren't they? It's all theory. Or are they? Are they aren't. Are them? Are them. They've not been a them in some time. Are we? Or have they? They? Them? Which they aren't they? Who? Which we aren't we? Which why, where, for all? 
A Russian edition of uh, that book uh, has as much footnotes additionally to what he wrote, just to explain what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs>